Hey y'all, what's going on? This is Jay Marie of Jay Marie Booklist and today I'm coming to talk to you about what do you do when the fire alarm goes off. So 9 times out of 10 when the fire alarm goes off in the hospital there is a fire somewhere. Um, but you as a secretary you need to be you need to remain calm. So there could be um, many reasons why the fire alarm is going off. Like I said, there's a fire somewhere. You fire in the cafeteria, fire in a room, you know, a patient was smoking. Uh, I know one time we had a patient smoking in the stairwell. Um, you know, they smoking in the bathrooms. Um, sometimes, you know, I know one time we were in there cooking. It was 4th of July, we, was in, we were in the break room. They had the, they was up in there frying. They had the hamburgers and hot dogs. We was eating good that day. <laughs> we was eating good that day. Um, but they was frying up all kind of stuff. So, you know, there are a lot of reasons why stuff, you know, why the fire alarms go off. Nine times out of ten, it really is a fire somewhere. Um, but what do you do? What is your role as a secretary when the fire alarm goes off? Now, there will be times where it's just a test. And they will usually announce it that it's a test. You know, because I know um, at the hospital they do maybe once or twice where they do a test of and the fire department is there and they quiz you and all this stuff so but nine times out of ten there is a fire and the fire alarm goes off so at the hospital they you know the fire alarm will go off we will all get up and we will go close doors we would go look in the room um like in icu we would tell them you know um they're conducting the test that's just a, this is just a test even though there is a fire somewhere it's just a test you know they're testing the fire alarm and um you know we would we're supposed to go in the room check to make sure there's nobody in the bathroom but nine times out of ten you just peek in say i'm gonna close the door they're testing the fire alarm and and then close the door um now that you're supposed to go in the bathroom and make sure nobody's in the bathroom but usually nobody was in the bathroom they're in the room and so in like an icu there's only one person in in the room and the doors are clear so you just close the slide door and um just tell them you know they're testing the alarm and you know and then once they once we got the all clear we will go and you know open the door back but and then of course um you know any door that's supposed to be shut will be shut so the doors had magnets on them and then any doors because all the doors are supposed to be shut because you're point is to contain a fire you're supposed to do a race when there's a fire you do a race and race stands for rescue so that's why I say you're supposed to go in a room well that a race means rescue and then the a the R means um, rescue so you rescue someone from the fire and then a means you pull the alarm and then C is contain so you contain the fire and then E can mean, it can mean extinguish, it can mean evacuate. It just all depends. Um, but your role, so if you were to go, if the fire was in the room, like say it was in that room, you would go in that room, you check the bathroom, you check and, and then you pull them out the room. So you, you go in the room, you rescue, you pull them out, and then you sound the alarm, and then you contain, Cause that's why when we close the door that's containing the fire that's as if the fire was in that room and then you extinguish or you evacuate so your role is to go even though there the fire is in the cafeteria you still do the same thing because it wants you to get in the habit you get up you go in the room or like i said we didn't go in the room because we knew in icu we knew how many people were in the room but you go in the room and then, you know, if it was a fire, you act as if there's a fire in that room. You rescue, you pull the alarm, you contain the fire, so you close the door, and then you're supposed to, if it was a real fire, you will put a, 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 a glove on the doorknob to let them know that you got, whoever was in that room, you got them out that room. This is, uh, this is if it goes where you got to evacuate the floor. Um, and then you extinguish or you evacuate. So that's what race means. So there are things you do. Like I said, we never had a fire on our floor. Um, we never had to evacuate the unit. There, you know, 
you, you should know that if there's a fire and you have to evacuate, you know, you know, you're supposed to go to another compartment on that. You're supposed to do a, a horizontal evacuation. So you're moving from your department to another department on that floor. And then if, if the fire spreads, then you got to do uh, a vertical. So you either go, you go down, I would go down, I wouldn't go up, but I would go down. Um, like I said, we never really had a fire on our unit. We probably could have caused a lot of fires. <laughs> we probably could have uh, caused a lot of fires, but we never had um, any fires. And um, but you, it was just a, it was just a, a a habit, and we just tell them, hey, you know, they're just testing out the 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 fire alarm when it really was a fire, fire in the cafeteria, uh, things like that. And also, um, now if you if you were to evacuate the unit. I think what you're supposed to do, like I said, we never had to do this, is you would give, and, and the reason why I say I think, I, I guess you would you would use it for a fire. Of course, you know, people who can go, who can, who are mobile, they need to go. Like what, what I read in the handbook, because I always read my handbook, is that you're supposed to give them the chart. But I don't know, but I don't think that's right. No, I, I don't think... I think you're supposed to grab the chart. So, but I don't know how you're gonna grab all those charts. So, I, I never, I never got a good clarification. I, in the ICU, I could have grabbed all the charts. It was, it, it was a small. The ICU is not that big. You grab all the charts and you run. But um, I guess if you were evacuating and they were going to another facility, then you would give them the chart. You would give the patient the chart. Now, this is only if you had to evacuate the building. The building's on fire. They can't. You, you will give them the give the patient the chart they will get in the ambulance and go to another hospital the chart goes with them because you get the physical chart because you got everything in the computer the physical chart goes with them um but if it's just a regular fire i don't know i i, I really if you got 30 people on your unit how, how are you getting all those charts the only thing i come up with is you grab the chart throw them in a wheelchair and then figure it out down going down the stairs because you're not using any elevators when the building's on fire. You got to evacuate. And then, of course, you know, how do you get the patients out? And plus, are you going to be required to help get the patients out? If you got patients, like in the ICU, you can't, like, if, I mean, some people, yeah, you can put in a wheelchair. But uh, everybody can't get one in a wheelchair. And, and, and how are you going to get them in a wheelchair going down the stairs? Because what you would have to do is put them on a sheet and pull them down the stairs, you know, carry them down the stairs. And I wouldn't be no good for that because <laughs> I don't, I don't do all that. Okay. I would be, I look, I would get the chart, <laughs> but, uh, you know, you gotta, that's how you get them out. You pull them, put them on the sheet blanket and you pull them just like they pull them up in the bed. That's how you get them out the building. So, um, but like the people who can, who, you know, if you're on a, a regular four and a I feel sorry for the people in ortho because everybody with broken bones. Ooh, I, I don't know how they gonna get them people. But, um, yeah, I mean, I guess you could put them in a wheelchair and two of you, because two of you going to carry them down the stairs anyway on the sheet, on the blanket. So, I guess you could, two in a wheelchair. Um, I guess you could. But, you know, there are things you need to know how to do when the fire alarm goes off. What do you do? So, like I said, there was always a fire somewhere for whatever reason. And the alarm would go off. The doors would shut because you want to contain the fire. You don't want the fire to spread. Um, I know like in the hallway, that's how, that's how I knew when I would come in that there was a fire somewhere in the building because the doors in the hallway would be shut. And no one, cause it's like, if it's night shift, no one went out there to open those doors. So the, those doors are shut and they didn't go back to open them and let them sit open. Cause the doors technically, if the door could, if, if if the door could be shut, like if it automatically shuts on its, on its own, you weren't supposed to prop that door open. So like we were guilty, we propped the door in the break room open because that door was shut by itself and it had a cold. But we always, we propped that door open with a chair, even though we weren't supposed to. Because if it was a fire, which it would be, is more likely to happen in the break room when you got the, you got all that stuff in there we ain't supposed to have. And you know, start a fire, the door shut so the fire doesn't spread to the rest of the department 
but we kept, we propped that door open, which was a violation. We knew we knew we knew what we were doing, but like in the hallways, the doors would shut. The magnet when the fire alarm go off, the magnet would release and the doors were shut because you want to contain the fire. So even though the fire is in the cafeteria, all the doors everywhere shut, and then they you know it, sh it shuts off the oxygen and or air or whatever, but. You know, those were the things you're supposed to do. You ain't supposed to prop no door open in the hospital. The door automatically shuts on its on its own. You're not supposed to prop it open. But uh, you know, we violate stuff because like we were in there cooking. We had Fourth of July. We had hot dogs and hamburgers and and uh, we had everything. We had fruits, potato chips. We was eat, we was eating good. I know one year, um, and I think for, I think that same Fourth of July weekend. They made breakfast. We had breakfast and lunch. Okay, we had waffles up in there. We were supposed to have all that stuff. It was smoke. The break room was just smoky as all get out. We weren't supposed to have all that stuff in there. Y'all know we weren't supposed to be doing all that. And I set my butt right at the nurse station because I'm like, if it go down, okay, <laughs> y'all cause a fire in here. I'm at like, I don't know nothing. Even though the door is right there, I don't know nothing. But uh, yeah, they was they was in there cooking, and I sure did get I did get a plate. Yes, I did. But, uh, you know, there are things you just need to know. When a fire alarm goes off, what do you do? Now, if it's a real fire and it's on your unit, you got to do your race. Your rescue, your alarm, your um, containment, and then your evacuation or, or uh, extinguish. Now, you need to know where the fire alarm is. So, like, in the ICU, the fire alarm was right next to me. So, I could have just grabbed it and pulled it down. And then the fire hose were outside the unit, but the hose were long, cause that's because they, we used to once a year the fire department would come and um, do a drill with us and ask us, you know, and we had to know it was like a quiz. We had to know where the stuff was. So there were two fire alarms. I know one was next to me. I can't remember what the other one was. And then the fire hose was outside the unit, but it was long. And then there was another one outside the unit. Or oh, that one might have been in the in the unit, but it was on the other end because the IC was long. Whereas in the main floor, um, it was right across from me. So the the water, the fire hose, and like a little um, thing to break it was right there. I can't remember where the fire alarm was to pull, but I know. It was right there because it was literally right there in front of me because there was some stairs right here, a stairwell right here, and that was right there. So these are things you need to know. Where where is your fire? Where is your fire alarm on your on your unit? If something were to happen now and you need and they say pull the alarm, where is the alarm? Do you know where it's at? Go grab the water. It's a fire. Grab the water hose. Do you know where it's at? Do you you need to know these things because you know you 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 the one that know everything. Okay, you the one. I'm telling you, you just started yesterday, but you got to know everything. So you need to know where that's at. You need to make that one of your things. Like I said, I don't remember. Um, I know, I remember the right there and then the fire hose and it's long because I think they might have pulled it out one day when um, just to show us how long it was that it could reach the rooms and then there was another one. But I want to say that was outside the unit. The other way but it can reach into the rooms too so you need to know these things and um so this is uh j marie that's all i got for you today i will talk to you later you can visit you can <laughs> you can visit me on my blog it's jmariebooklets.com it's where i talk about being a health unit coordinator and um i probably will be making posting content over there that i won't make a video for or sometimes i'll make a video here but won't post content over there. So just just subscribe to the, the blog and and um I'll talk to you later. Bye.